the Bermuda Triangle, one of the deadliest places on Earth. A hot zone where ships and airplanes vanish without a trace. But halfway around the globe, at its polar opposite, there lies another triangle. This one more mysterious and more deadly. It is known as the Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle is an area where ships disappear, planes disappear, and other kind of phenomena occur. There's really no way to predict what sorts of things you're going to see out here. And we do see some pretty odd stuff. We'll explore the mysteries, the evidence, and the science behind one of the most treacherous, dangerous, and puzzling triangle regions on the planet. If your ship was right on top of that gas bubble, you would sink because you wouldn't have enough buoyancy to keep your ship floating. As events involving ships, planes, and submarines continue to terrify passengers and mystify experts, many wonder, what is down there? And what could possibly be next in the Pacific's Bermuda Triangle? Twenty-five degrees north, one hundred and forty-two degrees east. These are the coordinates of the center of one of the most mysterious triangle regions on Earth. For centuries, this area has hosted some of the most bizarre disappearances of ships, airplanes, and loss of life anywhere on the planet. But this is not the Bermuda Triangle. It is a 500,000 square mile area located in the deep waters of the Pacific Ocean. It is known as the Dragon's Triangle. The Devil's Sea, or the Dragon's Triangle, is an area off the southern coast of Japan where, supposedly, uh, many unexplained shipwrecks have taken place, where planes have disappeared, very similar to uh, the Bermuda Triangle in, of course, a very different part of the world. The Dragon's Triangle is a large area of water off the east coast of Japan, bounded by Japan and Guam, in the Philippine Sea, in which navigators and ships have, have reported for thousands of years loss of ships, loss of compass readings, and strange objects flying out of the water. Curiously, its counterpoint in the Atlantic, the infamous Bermuda Triangle, lies directly across the globe along the 35 degree latitude line. Both areas are believed to contain some of the world's deepest waters, much of which remains unexplored to this day. Both the Bermuda Triangle and the Dragon Sea lie along the same latitude and both have the same anomaly where geographic north and magnetic north seem to come together so compass readings are off by 20 degrees and that's why researchers believe there are so many lost planes and ships in these areas. It's quite interesting to see that they are both at exactly the same location. The boundaries of the Dragon's Triangle are generally believed to stretch from central Japan to Guam to the Mariana Islands. While lesser known to the West than the Bermuda Triangle, unexplained disappearances and strange phenomena occur in this area with a far greater and more alarming frequency. Since World War II, it is believed that over 1,500 vessels and hundreds of military, commercial, and civilian aircraft have disappeared. The Dragon's Triangle has had many more ships disappear than the Bermuda Triangle. And the ships that have disappeared in the Dragon's Triangle have been large ones, military ships, cargo ships. What's so odd about the Dragon's Triangle compared to the Bermuda Triangle is that the Bermuda Triangle has so much more press. Why would that be? The area first gained modern notoriety in 1989 with the publication of Charles Berlitz's The Dragon's Triangle. Berlitz, coincidentally, was the author of the book, The Bermuda Triangle, which reopened that mysterious case in 1974. For years, Berlitz studied the reports of ship and aircraft disappearances in this area, along with reports of UFO sightings and other anomalies. According to his research, compasses often fail or give wildly inaccurate readings in the triangle. 
Boats and airplanes report being moved far off course in a matter of seconds. Sightings of ghost ships have been reported for over 100 years. And finally, hundreds of ships, airplanes, and even submarines have, without warning, fallen to the bottom of this extremely deep region. One of Berlitz's most terrifying and puzzling unsolved cases involves what he considers unseen and unknown forces that pulled legendary pilot Amelia Earhart down to her death in the heart of the Triangle in 1937. She goes more than two-thirds of the way around the world, over 22,000 miles. I look eastward over the Pacific, she writes. I shall be glad when we have the hazards of its navigation behind us. This fleeting radio contact is the last verified report of Amelia Earhart. Here's a story where Amelia Earhart was flying off Guam some say she was on a spy mission for the United States, and she lost her compass bearings. July 2nd, 1937, 12.30 p.m. Pioneering aviator Amelia Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan left Ley, New Guinea on the last leg of a round-the-world flight. Their flight plan would have taken them 2,500 miles to Howland Island for a refueling stop and over the Dragon's Triangle. The two were never seen again. Her compass and her instruments went down. Her plane was lost. She was never heard from again. To this day, Earhart's disappearance remains one of aviation's greatest unsolved cases. The Dragon's Triangle is also host to stories of ghost ships appearing out of the fog. Berlitz associates the Dragon's Triangle with one of the sea's greatest mysteries as well ghost ships, large ships floating at sea, completely devoid of people, cargo, and equipment. He claims the region has been fraught with unmanned floating hulks for centuries. In Japanese tradition, these ghost ships are typically malevolent. They want to destroy the living people that they run into. Ghost ships exceeding 100,000 tons have been seen floating aimlessly in the Dragon's Triangle. If true, how does an entire crew vanish without a trace? Berlitz points out a pair of horrifying ghost ship cases in his book. June 11, 1881, 4 a.m. According to reports, the HMS Bashante encountered the legendary glowing flying Dutchman ghost ship late at night in the deepest area of the Dragon's Triangle. A naval ensign aboard the ship, a prince who would later become England's King George V, made the following entry in the ship's log. The flying Dutchman crossed our bows. She emitted a strange phosphorescent light, as of a phantom ship, all aglow. She came up on the port bow, where also the officer of the watch from the bridge saw her. But on arrival, there was no vestige or any sign whatever of any material ship to be seen, either near or right away to the horizon. The night became clear and the sea calm. January 1989, Berlitz says that a Japanese whaling ship skippered by Captain Moro Sagakami came within 50 feet of a small fishing boat that was bobbing erratically in their course one dark, clear night. The captain and several crew members arrived to find a ship completely barren of all crew and cargo, save for the corpse of the captain, still gripping the helm. As far as ghost ships are concerned, what if the crews themselves were abductees? So the reason the vessel is adrift, the reason there's no crew, no remains, is that the crews are simply gone, taken by a USO. According to Berlitz's research, dozens of vessels have gone even further off the radar. They have disappeared from the Triangle entirely. On April 19, 1949, the Kuroshio Maru No. 1 disappears with a reported crew of 23. On June 8, 1952, 29 crew members of the Chifuku Maru No. 5 vanish. June 26, 1955, a U.S. Air Force F-3B jet loses radio contact with its base. Its two-man crew disappears. March 12, 1957, Eight crewmen aboard a United States Air Force KB-50 tanker transport are reported missing. 
June 7, 1963. Remains of the Donan Maru are found floating on the ocean surface off Shio Nomizaki. But an event forever etched into triangle lore and Japanese history is the mysterious sinking of the Japanese research vessel Kaiyo Maru No. 5. Kaiyo Maru No. 5 was a Coast Guard ship researching about that area. On September 24, 1952, the Japanese Maritime Safety Agency research vessel Kaiyo Maru No. 5 is in the Dragon's Triangle. She went out to the Dragon's Triangle specifically to find out the cause of all the losses of vessels in that area. Suddenly, without any distress call, she disappears forever, taking with her a crew of 22 and nine scientists. In their official Kaiyo Maru No. 5 accident investigation report from March 1953, the Marine Coast Guard states, We have to investigate when, where, why it disappeared because there are no witnesses and no survivors for this accident. While many conclude that the ship fell victim to an underwater volcano's eruption, others remain unconvinced. Very ironic that here you have a ship that's going out looking for other ships and it disappears. And that oftentimes happens in these mysterious triangles. Because of this event's importance to Japanese maritime history, Today in Tokyo, there is a shrine dedicated to the memory of those lost in this mysterious sinking. Coming up, commercial and military pilots and captains report frightening shifts of the time-space continuum when navigating through the Dragon's Triangle. He had experienced missing time during the period he saw the UFO. Like the Bermuda Triangle in the Atlantic, the Dragon's Triangle in the Pacific just off Japan is believed to play havoc with the so-called time-space continuum of planet Earth. This unexplained phenomenon reportedly causes ships and airplanes to be forced off course by miles and miles and for clocks to suddenly change time, all in an instant. Some of the theories for the Dragon's Triangle include that it's anomaly, that there's some kind of magnetic anomaly, that there's some kind of black hole in the ocean, that there's something from outer space that zooms down and has some kind of interaction with, you know, craft there and they disappear. But as far as we know, things happen there and we don't know why. In the late 1950s, American television and radio personality Arthur Godfrey, an accomplished pilot in his own right, reportedly experiences a frightening occurrence in the Dragon's Triangle one that nearly cost him his life. In the 1950s, the band leader and television personality from America, Arthur Godfrey, was piloting a twin-engine craft over the Dragon's Triangle. He saw a USO. The instruments on his plane went dead. He was low on fuel. He had to navigate by the sun because his compass was out. When his instruments came back on and he was able to get over land again, he found out the same exact thing that he had experienced missing time during the period. With only enough fuel for three hours, Godfrey piloted his craft on dead reckoning. After one hour, his instrumentation returned and he was able to return to course. However, Godfrey would later report that he inexplicably lost a half hour. His clocks literally rolled backwards. Fortunately for Godfrey and his crew, they safely arrived in Tokyo, avoiding the terrible fate of Amelia Earhart and countless others in the Dragon's Triangle. Other similar time-space anomalies over the Triangle have been reported by military pilots in the 1950s and 60s, including Air Force pilot Frank Hopkins, an advisor to the 106th Air Transport Group. In the summer of 1968, he wrote to Argosy magazine with a story of a time-space continuum shift while flying a C-97 Stratofreighter over the Dragon's Triangle. In the spring of 1966, I was a basic navigator aboard an Air Guard C-97 flying from Kwajalein Island to Guam. We looked forward to a pleasant night flight of about six to six and a half hours. Hopkins says that, as per protocol, he plots his position hourly using star navigation. But during the third hour of the flight, something inexplicable occurs. I shot a second celestial fix. Weather was excellent. 
Only problem was that I almost fell out of the airplane when I put this on the chart. This last fix was almost 340 nautical miles down intended course. I rechecked and rechecked. A plugging old C-97 covered 340 nautical miles in one hour of time for no apparent reason. Later, upon landing on Guam, Hopkins reports to his duty officer that his airplane jumped many hundreds of miles ahead of course, but no report is filed. Hopkins says that he remains convinced, however, that this area is indeed home to peculiar forces that pose great danger to airplanes and ships. Due to the confluence of these events, experts continue to feel other forces might possibly be at work deep below the triangle. Of all the anomalies in the Dragon's Triangle, none are more mysterious than the vast number of sightings of UFOs. According to Charles Berlitz's Dragon's Triangle, he believes the most notorious cause of deadly events in the area are the specter of UFOs and their underwater counterparts, USOs, unidentified submerged objects. Quote, a number of ships that have disappeared in the Dragon's Triangle have been sunk by USOs. These events were often attributed in ancient times to angry demons or dragons. The Japanese were very influenced by the Chinese and the Chinese were great believers in dragons and that, that these dragons were somehow at sea and they could uh, you know, rise up and the dragon was both a propitious and a threatening symbol. UFO experts in Japan and researchers like Berlitz all believe the apparitions in the triangle thought to be monsters and dragons by early witnesses were in fact UFOs. These reports continue to this day. As we studied about this area, we found many interesting scientific reasons for these incidents, which had been called mysterious. There was a report in the Japan Sea by a fishing boat. The fishermen reported seeing a huge UFO flying back and forth and lights in the ocean. Japanese ufologist Junichiro Kato, head of our J, the organization of UFO research Japan, has been studying UFO phenomenon for almost 20 years. He has seen UFOs on numerous occasions over the waters near Japan and has photographed many of his sightings. I have so many photographs. There are maybe over 200 sightings. At one point, I witnessed one or two a month. The eastern tip of the Dragon's Triangle is believed by experts to even include portions of the city of Tokyo. On June 14, 1997, Kato snapped a photograph of a fast-moving glowing disk, moving at, he estimates, over 500 miles per hour just above the waters off Tokyo Bay. I took a picture of three UFOs flying in formation over the ocean near Tokyo Disneyland. The three UFOs made a triangle shape. This event was seen by ten witnesses. The event was phoned into local Tokyo news outlets by several witnesses. But media reports were never filed. Kato was not the only modern Japanese witness to inform the History Channel of sightings of UFO-like objects over the Dragon's Triangle. Nobu Miyoshi, a Tokyo-based magazine editor, witnessed a UFO over the Dragon's Triangle while on this quiet beach about 30 miles south of Tokyo in 1990. In August of 1990, I saw an airplane going in one direction and a white light appeared very close to the jet and I wondered what it was. It moved like it was writing a W in the sky. It moved at one kilometer per second. It was quite quick. Before that, I didn't believe in UFOs. But since then, I became a believer. This unique experience leaves an indelible impression on Nobu. I wasn't scared. I was very surprised. I'd love to see it again and watch it much closer. Throughout the 20th century, eyewitness reports of UFO sightings in the Dragon's Triangle began to swell from verbal reports from fishermen to official reports from military men and women. After World War II, the Soviet Navy had one of the largest active fleets in the Northern Pacific. 
Over the years, sailors and officers aboard these vessels have been responsible for some of the best UFO reports in the Dragon's Triangle. In 1977, the Reconnaissance Division of the Soviet Navy organized a scientific research project to examine the issue of UFOs in the water. I was in charge of this group. At the end of 1977, we gave our large naval vessels instructions on how to observe UFOs. August 18, 1980. According to reports from Moscow-based UFO experts Vladimir Azhaja, the Russian research vessel Vladimir Volbidov moved slowly south through the Dragon's Triangle around Japan, heading toward Okinawa. Just after midnight, suddenly and without warning, a cylindrical metallic UFO-like object is seen to rise slowly from the sea, hover, then dart away into the sky. The object's ability to hover has caused experts like Azhaja to believe that the craft was not man-made. To this day, the event remains a mystery. Eight months after this Russian event, another significant incident occurs in almost the exact same location. One of the more recent cases, and a fascinating case, is the Taki Kyoto Maru from 1981. They spotted a UFO, actually a USO, coming out of the water. April 17, 1981. It is a clear day and the seas are calm. The 165-foot Japanese freighter Taki Kyoto Maru is sailing 200 miles off Kanazawa with over 30 crew members. Suddenly, the crew is rocked as shockwaves roll through their ship. The seamen immediately assume they've been hit. April 17th of 1981, a Japanese ship sailing off the coast of Japan in an area that is noted as the Dragon's Triangle encountered a UFO that came out of the sea violently and caused huge waves to buffet the ship. Captain Usuda is at the helm when a bright, saucer-shaped object rises out of the water. The USO is over 50 feet in diameter and hovers silently over the ship. The ship's instruments, the compass, the various dials, the engines, all began to blur as the USO circled around the ship. The captain estimated that the USO circled the ship for about 15 minutes, then plunged back into the water. The waves were so violent, Yusuda reports, the ship nearly capsized. Even more fierce turbulence occurs when the USO returns to the water. Here's the intriguing thing. When the instruments came back on, the captain compared the time on the radio to the time on the watches and found out the ship had lost 15 minutes in time. Coming up. A near-miss collision over the Dragon's Triangle almost dooms air passengers, crewmen, and the UFO. Reports of UFOs observing and hovering close to large ships is not new to the Dragon's Triangle. According to Japanese ufologist Junichiro Narasawa, a Japanese government research vessel, Kaio Maru, is a ship with an impressive UFO-related history. Launched in 1967, she became the largest ship in the Ministry of Agriculture's fleet, weighing in at over 2,500 tons. The Kaio Maru was also considered to be one of the most advanced nautical research ships of her time. On two known occasions, 1984 and 1986, the premier research ship was reportedly tracked by a UFO. These chilling events were witnessed by at least nine research scientists aboard the ship including researcher Mikio Noganobu. In December 1984, Mr. Naganobu was in the Falkland Islands at the southern end of South America. One night, he saw two dozen UFOs. They were like lights floating in the sky. Then they suddenly went in three different directions. The second reported sighting by the Kaio Maru occurs two years later, in 1986, but this time in the Dragon's Triangle. A huge, cigar-shaped UFO, over 100 feet long, is reported to approach the ship at high speed before diving into the water. According to Mr. Naganobu, 
he witnessed another event in 1986 in the Japan Sea. A huge, cigar-shaped UFO approached the ship. The only thing they saw was a small red light that kept disappearing. But this time, the UFO was seen on radar. These two extraordinary events were reported in detail in the Japanese edition of Scientific American magazine in September 1988. Scientific American magazine reported about these incidents. In the article, the editor actually described that this event is very important because it's an official report of the government research ship of the Ministry of Agriculture. Reports of UFOs in the Dragon's Triangle are not limited to the sea. From the Amelia Earhart incident onward, pilots have found the skies above the Triangle to be as treacherous as the oceans below. A significant air-to-air -air UFO event occurred over the western end of the Triangle. A near-miss collision between an unidentified aircraft and a Toa Airlines Convair 240. One famous incident happened in Ikeda when a pilot witnessed a UFO and the control tower announced to all the aircraft that there was a UFO approaching. March 18, 1965, 7.06 p.m. In a harried report to the air traffic control tower in Tomokatsu, 43-year-old Captain Yoshiharu Inaba reports an unidentified oblong craft is approaching his jetliner as it cruises over the triangle fast. Inaba then makes a 60-degree turn at over 500 miles per hour to avoid collision. The object stops abruptly, then follows alongside the airliner. Captain Inaba reports he's being shadowed by a UFO. He reports the object is 50 feet in length and radiates a greenish light. Several witnesses observe the situation from the ground. Meanwhile, a Piper Apache registered to Tokyo Airlines hears Captain Inaba's frantic transmissions. At 10.07 Universal Time, he sees the same UFO at 7,200 feet heading east to Osaka and toward the Dragon's Triangle. Air traffic controller Akira Taguchi was at his post when Captain Inaba radios his report. He later confirms the object was seen over the mountains near Hiroshima and near the island of Shikoku. The same day, at roughly the same time, engineers who worked in the mountains near Hiroshima said they had seen something which had been a flying saucer. These are the facts. Nobody knows what this object really was. The Dragon's Triangle has been known for thousands of years. And one of the stories that's connected with it is that there's a dragon that lives under the ocean and comes out of the ocean and snatches craft and vessels down into the depths. One of the world's earliest UFO stories, in fact, originates from the waters off Japan, along with what many believe to be the first modern drawings of UFOs. The legend of the Utsurobune, a mysterious alien woman who arrives from the bottom of the Pacific in a round craft-like vessel, goes back centuries. A closer look at the drawings reveals a flying saucer-shaped object, similar to those seen by countless witnesses in the 20th century. These drawings are thought to be the earliest known UFO-themed prints. In the writings, they found a description of a bowl-like metal ship that arrived on a beach called Hirotono Hama. The witnesses approached and looked inside. There was a woman with smooth, light clothes. Are you asleep? On the ship, there were letters that had never been seen before. They described what could have been a UFO in ancient Japan. There were no round ships in Japan at that time, so they believed it was a UFO. The most interesting uh, part of the shapes of the Utsurobune, it is very similar to the modern UFOs. So my first uh, interest is uh, why the people uh, ima can imagine this kind of shape 200 y years ago. Kazuo Tanaka, a professor at Gifu University in Tokyo, reopened the Gatsuro Bune legend in 1997. His investigation led him to ask if the mysterious woman who came out of the waters of the Pacific so long ago was really part of, quote, a close encounter of the third kind. I investigated the uh, old ship in the um, Edo period, 200 years, uh, intensively, but I could not find that uh, uh, any ships that is similar to these uh, spherical shapes. 
this is similar to the uh, Utsurobune. So it is very, very, uh, I think, uh, um, strange thing. Beginning in the early 1800s, Japan suddenly sees a bounty of Utsurobune drawings, all by different artists in different parts of the country, each one telling the exact same story of a mysterious woman emerging from an eerily similar saucer-shaped craft. Uh, the Utsurobune folklore is very famous in the, uh, Japan, and had it done in the many places in Japan. I could find five pictures. Uh, it is very, a little bit strange. So why people uh, made so, so many drawings concerning the uh, Utsurobune? It is a mistake. These strange coincidences cause experts like Tanaka to wonder if Japan, which was completely closed to outsiders and outside news until 1857, experienced a mass UFO sighting at around this time. The Utsurobune folklore in Japan has a key to solve the mystery of the modern UFOs, I think. Coming up, scientists examine the theories behind the mysterious disappearance of vessels in the Dragon's Triangle. The mysteries of the sea purvey Japanese culture and history. Stories and legends surrounding UFO activity in the Dragon's Triangle have been around for centuries. On September 24th, 1235, Strange celestial lights are seen to move and hover above General Yoritsumi's army encampment in Kyoto, which terrified the troops. The objects were thought to be dragons from the sea, on their way to attack them. Forty years later, two large-scale catastrophic events in the Dragon's Triangle would make world history and give its deep waters a deadly reputation the Devil's Triangle, which has accumulated a certain amount of lore in modern times. And this clearly, to some extent at least, reflects old Japanese traditions having to do with the sea, with dangers in the sea, with supernatural or even divine beings who live in the sea, who can both protect and also attack those who earn their livelihood from the sea, fishermen and so on. In 1274, the Mongol Empire under Kublai Khan assembled a massive force of over 900 ships to conquer the one territory he coveted, Japan. Victory was more than assured until a single catastrophic event in the Triangle stopped this massive armada cold. Mongolia was governing maybe half of Europe and all over Asia and they tried to invade Japan as well. A typhoon came and all of the ships were sunk and they couldn't reach Japan. And they brought about 40,000 troops in 1274 to Japan. More than half of that fleet was sunk in this storm and so the Mongols uh, first invasion ended up as a, a major disaster. You know, some 20,000 Mongols were killed in that instance or lost their lives. Khan made another, more massive attack on Japan in 1281. This time he brought 140,000 men and 3,000 ships. The second invasion had similar disastrous results. An estimated 70,000 Mongol troops were destroyed along with the majority of the ships. The second great effort to invade Japan uh, was once again uh, defeated by the arrival of a propitious wind, as the Japanese like to call it. And this, this created the notion of the divine wind. At the time of the Mongolian invasion, it is believed that the wind saved Japan. Experts and historians alike still question if events in this anomalous zone are the work of divine winds of benevolent gods, strange meteorological occurrences, or possibly something else. The fact that uh, nature intervened on two separate occasions, uh, I don't know, it, it, it did put a little bit of uh, folklore into Japanese history as far as, uh, as uh, heavenly intervention protecting Japan. As Japan was all but closed to outsiders over much of its history, experts fear that a great reserve of UFO research into the Triangle is forever lost. 
It was not until the late 19th century that reports became more frequent. The American official whose work helped open Japan's door to the West was personally involved in a mystery involving possible UFOs in the Dragon's Triangle. July 8, 1853, 4 a.m. Commodore Matthew C. Perry is off the coast of Ulaga in Tokyo Bay. Suddenly, an unusual object emerges from the sky. Perry recorded this encounter in his log. During the watch, from midnight to 4 a.m., a very remarkable meteor was seen. It made its appearance in the south and west and illuminated the whole atmosphere. The spars, sails, and hulls of the ships in company, as well as our own, reflected its glare as distinctly as though a blue light were burning from each at the same time. From the south and west, about 15 degrees above the horizon, it pursued a northeasterly course in a direct line for a long distance, when it fell gradually toward the sea and disappeared. What follows is a vivid description of something which does not resemble a meteor, something far more ominous. Its shape was that of a large blue sphere with a red wedge-shaped tail, which, it could be easily observed, was formed of ignited particles and resembled the sparks of a rocket as they appear upon explosion. UFO researchers in Japan are convinced that Commodore Perry, during one of the most important voyages west by an American, witnessed a UFO in the heart of the Dragon's Triangle. There was a report of sightings of a UFO when the American leadership approached the Japanese government to open commerce. While his ship was floating at the Uraga, Perry wrote the report in his navigation diary. Others witnessed this sighting as well. Perry continued to search for clues and answers, but died five years later in 1858, without further insight into the events of that night. Coming up, scientists at the world's largest wave tank at Tokyo University recreate some of the most dramatic events seen in the Dragon's Triangle. This is where two big dragons are hiding themselves from 3,000 years ago. This area is called the Devil's Sea and many ships have disappeared without good reason. Let's find out the biggest and strongest mystery of the 20th century, the Dragon's Triangle. What we have seen is that in Japan, in the Ring of Fire, that before and after increased seismic activity or increased volcanic activity, there will be a lot of sightings of these UFOs. Deep beneath the Dragon's Triangle lies one of the most seismically active regions on the planet. Here gigantic undersea tectonic plates shift constantly and sub-oceanic volcano eruptions are quite frequent. All of which might be responsible for significant shipping losses and dramatic loss of life. Back in the States, we receive uh, message traffic on a regular basis that tells us uh, volcano warning alerts. So not only do we know where they are, we have them plotted on our charts. If I go down and check my email right now, I have about eight or ten messages from these guys telling us that there's a volcano here that has shown some sort of seismic activity, and uh, your best bet is to steer clear. When you get an underwater eruption, depending on how deep it is, if it's pretty deep, you'll just get lava flows coming out, but if it's closer to the surface, you'll get actual gas in the magma that forms bubbles, and it's an explosive eruption. Dr. Joanne Stock is professor of geology and geophysics at Caltech University in Pasadena, California. One of the Mariana Islands, which was erupting in 2003, it had these eruptions that were on the island itself, and people could see that there's pulses of gas coming out. It actually has more than 80 little vents that are offshore that are also active. If one of those was erupting, you know, you might see the peak of the volcano on the island. It doesn't look like anything's happening, but something could be erupting underwater where your ship is sailing near it and could be affected or could sink because too much gas is in the water. The gases created by underwater volcanoes can wreak havoc with ships, even huge container and cargo ships. If you happen to get a gas bubble, you know, a big gas bubble that came out of a vent that was underwater, if your ship was right on top of that gas bubble, you would sink because you wouldn't have enough buoyancy to keep your ship floating. The ring of fire that lies within the Dragon's Triangle is filled with dangerous volcanoes at varied depths. 
the shallowest ones are these islands above sea level, and then they go on down, you know, 10,000 feet. Why is there so much volcanic activity surrounding Japan and this area? It may come as a surprise to some people to realize that the majority of the volcanism on the planet Earth is happening on the seafloor. Most of the Pacific Ocean floor is moving from east to west, and as the seafloor is dragged down into the interior of the Earth, this water reacts with hot rock and makes volcanoes. Volcanoes along the Marianas, which are erupting as a result of this plate collision, can toss aerosols and particulate matter all the way up to the stratosphere, and obviously if a plane flew into that, it might clog the engines. Another dangerous phenomenon in the Dragon's Triangle is the so-called Triangle Waves. These bizarre oceanic enigma are swift and deadly, and impossible to predict. There are big waves, seven, eight, nine feet high, crashing in from different directions. This creates huge waves up to 65 feet high. This is the most dangerous thing that I have ever seen. Japan is located where there are seasonal big winds. In the wintertime, there tends to be a lot of bad weather and turbulence. Winds from different directions create the triangle waves. The term triangular wave, sankakunami in Japanese, is a name used by Japanese people from the past. What it represents uh, from a scientific point of view is not known. Dr. Hiroshi Tomita, special researcher at Japan's National Maritime Research Institute, and Dr. Takuji Waseda, professor at the University of Tokyo, performed a unique experiment for the History Channel in the world's largest wave tank. It demonstrates the destructive capabilities of the kinds of triangle waves and currents that affect this area. A U.S. commercial ship reported that they actually saw a wave over 100 feet high, but it was measured by sight, so they don't have any scientific proof. What my team is trying to do is measure in a more scientific way. There are 32 plungers at the end of the tank, which we control the amplitude of the phase from a computer. These tank tests are uh, scalable. The same thing can happen in the real ocean. Dr. Waseda illustrates the nature of a triangle wave. As two waves crosses each other, the wave pattern will form a triangular shape. When a ship encounters these kind of triangular shaped wave, the ship can move in quite a different way. Sometimes it can move this way, but sometimes it can roll. Roll, for example, for a ship is extremely dangerous. The energy piles up. It is said that the amplitude can be quite high because of the crossing sea. Not being able to predict the direction of the forces is a threat for a ship. The phenomenon of triangle waves is reportedly responsible for the destruction of many ships and great losses of life in the Dragon's Triangle. I think uh, the scientific knowledge is very similar to the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, we have no, no piece that much to the uh, UFOs. There are many reports of accidents, so I consider that it is a dangerous area. But we cannot define those accidents either from a volcano, natural causes, or some mysterious UFO. For hundreds of years in the Dragon's Triangle, there have been countless reports of disappearances and eerie encounters with UFOs, drawing a perfect correlation to its mysterious counterpart in Bermuda, leading many researchers to call this hot zone the Pacific's Bermuda Triangle. I've seen all the reports. I believe there are many people who see it and don't talk about it. There are some people who say, I cannot believe until I see with my own eyes. But of course, the eyes are not always reliable. We have to research from many different points of view. Maybe there are some doors that open frequently to the different dimensions on this planet. So, in theory, maybe it's possible there are doors like that in the ocean. Modern researchers, both for the Dragon Sea off Japan and the Bermuda Triangle off the Florida coast, have hypothesized that there's an undersea UFO base or a USO base in those waters. They're very deep, 
there's a lot of volcanic activity and sometimes the magnetic readings will throw off attempts to find objects on the bottom of the surface. So there may well be a USO base in the Dragon Sea off Japan. Having the same name as a famous vampire can give you a bad reputation. But this Romanian prince earned his infamous name from his cruel ways. The real Dracula left an enduring legacy, not just in blood, but also in brick, mortar, and stone. Now it's back to life on Lost Worlds, next on the History Channel. What about the Dragon's Triangle compared to the Bermuda Triangle is that the Bermuda Triangle has so much more press. Why would that be? The area first gained modern notoriety in 1989 with the publication of Charles Berlitz's The Dragon's Triangle. Berlitz, coincidentally, was the author of the book The Bermuda Triangle, which reopened that mysterious case in 1974. For years, Berlitz studied the reports of ship and aircraft disappearances in this area, along with reports of UFO sightings and other anomalies. According to his research, compasses often fail or give wildly inaccurate readings in the triangle. Boats and airplanes report being moved far off course in a matter of seconds. Sightings of ghost ships have been reported for over 100 years. And finally, hundreds of ships, airplanes, and even submarines have, without warning, fallen to the bottom of this extremely deep region. One of Berlitz's most terrifying and puzzling unsolved cases involves what he considers unseen and unknown forces that pulled legendary pilot Amelia Earhart down to her death in the heart of the Triangle in 1937. She goes more than two-thirds of the way around the world, over 22,000 miles. I look eastward over the Pacific, she writes. The Bermuda Triangle one of the deadliest places on earth. A hot zone where ships and airplanes vanish without a trace. But halfway around the globe, at its polar opposite, there lies another triangle. This one more mysterious and more deadly. It is known as the Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle is an area where ships disappear, planes disappear, and other kind of phenomena occur. There's really no way to predict what sorts of things you're going to see out here. And we do see some pretty odd stuff. We'll explore the mysteries, the evidence, and the science behind one of the most treacherous, dangerous, and puzzling triangle regions on the planet. If your ship was right on top of that gas bubble, you would sink because you wouldn't have enough buoyancy to keep your ship floating. As events involving ships, planes, and submarines continue to terrify passengers and mystify experts, many wonder, what is down there? And what could possibly be next in the Pacific's Bermuda Triangle? Twenty-five degrees north, 142 degrees east. These are the coordinates of the center of one of the most mysterious triangle regions on Earth. For centuries, this area has hosted some of the most bizarre disappearances of ships, airplanes, and loss of life anywhere on the planet. But this is not the Bermuda Triangle. It is a 500,000 square mile area located in the deep waters of the Pacific Ocean. It is known as the Dragon's Triangle. The Devil's Sea or the Dragon's Triangle is an area off the southern coast of Japan where supposedly uh, many unexplained shipwrecks have taken place, where planes have disappeared, very similar to uh, the Bermuda Triangle in, of course, a very different part of the world. The Dragon's Triangle is a large area of water off the east coast of Japan, bounded by Japan and Guam, in the Philippine Sea, in which navigators and ships have, have reported for thousands of years loss of ships, loss of compass readings, and strange objects flying out of the water. 
curiously its comp I shall be glad when we have the hazards of its navigation behind us. This fleeting radio contact is the last verified report of Amelia Earhart. Here's a story where Amelia Earhart was flying off Guam. Some say she was on a spy mission for the United States, and she lost her compass bearings. July 2nd, 1937, 12.30 p.m. Pioneering aviator Amelia Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan left Ley, New Guinea on the last leg of a round-the-world flight. Their flight plan would have taken them 2,500 miles to Howland Island for a refueling stop and over the Dragon's Triangle. The two were never seen again. Her compass and her instruments went down. Her plane was lost. She was never heard from again. To this day, Earhart's disappearance remains one of aviation's greatest unsolved cases. The Dragon's Triangle is also host to stories of ghost ships appearing out of the fog. Berlitz associates the Dragon's Triangle with one of the sea's greatest mysteries as well, ghost ships. Large ships floating at sea, completely devoid of people, cargo and equipment. At a point in the Atlantic, the infamous Bermuda Triangle lies directly across the globe along the 35 degree latitude line. Both areas are believed to contain some of the world's deepest waters, much of which remains unexplored to this day. Both the Bermuda Triangle and the Dragon Sea lie along the same latitude and both have the same anomaly where geographic north and magnetic north seem to come together so compass readings are off by 20 degrees and that's why researchers believe there are so many lost planes and ships in these areas it's quite interesting to see that they are both at exactly the same location the boundaries of the dragon's triangle are generally believed to stretch from central japan to guam to the mariana islands while lesser known to the west than the bermuda triangle Unexplained disappearances and strange phenomena occur in this area with a far greater and more alarming frequency. Since World War II, it is believed that over 1,500 vessels and hundreds of military, commercial, and civilian aircraft have disappeared. The Dragon's Triangle has had many more ships disappear than the Bermuda Triangle. And the ships that have disappeared in the Dragon's Triangle have been large ones, military ships, cargo ships. What's so odd?